Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. So, if you're like me, you've got a lot of different passwords. You've got account numbers for, you know, say for your banking websites, for your email services, for a whole bunch of other stuff. And you want to find a easy, quick solution to sort of organize everything into the one location. So what a lot of people have, you know, do is they'll have so many different types of passwords and they'll put them into notepad files or into text files or save them onto their phone. Uh, and that stuff really isn't protected. So anybody can really go in and just uh, access those, those files if, if they had access to your computer or to your phone, for example. So there's a great tool called KeePass. This tool is used uh, in a lot of uh, businesses as well as uh, for personal reasons as well just for saving and storing uh, multiple passwords into the one location. So KeePass is available for many operating systems as well as your phone. So I've got it running here on a Mac, for example, using KeePass. Uh, also, it's available for Windows, it's available for Linux, it's available for your iPhone, for your Android devices as well. So you can actually keep a KeePass file and it, it can be synced across your multiple devices. That way you've got access to all your passwords whenever you want and they're encrypted and uh, anyway, let, let's go through it and I'll show you I'll show you essentially what we do. So this particular one, KeePass. So I'm just going to keepass.info forward slash download. All right, and in here, you can actually download the Windows version of KeePass. Now this version is a Windows edition. So it'll run on your multiple versions of Windows. And there's also an equivalent version called KeePass X which can run uh, on your Mac. So in this case, we're gonna look at it on my Mac, but the version for Windows is pretty much the same. So I've gone and downloaded it, and I've got it here in my dock. So let's just go ahead and open KeePass X. Now the first thing you wanna do, as I said, this is the same on Windows. So the guide is, is sort of, uh, it, it'll work across both operating systems. Um, and, and you can also do this on your iPhone, Android, your iPad, etc., as well. So first thing you want to do is you want to create a new database. Now what this is going to do is it's going to ask you for a master password. So you want to make this password extremely complicated because what will happen is when you enter this master password into KeePass, you'll get access to all of your other passwords. Okay, so let's just make it uh, whatever. Okay, you've also got this thing called a key file. This is essentially like an encrypted file that you can actually create. So I can create a new key file and this key file, I can save it somewhere on my computer and it essentially creates a two level uh, authentication levels, right? So, so two form authentication. So you've also, so you, you don't only need the password to access the key pass file, but you also need the key file to access the key pass file. Right, which is a very, very handy, handy tool to have as well. So go ahead and create a password and a key file if you want. You can do just a key file, you can do both, or you can do just a password. So we're just gonna leave it for password for now. You can then go ahead and actually see what my password is. Nice and simple, I've made it. In your case, you wanna make it extremely complicated. The more complicated it is, the harder it's gonna to be to get access. So we're gonna say okay to that. Now we just present it with a root screen here and I can start creating new key pass entries. So I can create a file, I can say, uh, let's say a bank of the world, All right? The username is uh, my bank, that's the user I'm gonna be using, and then the password is whatever, okay? And then you wanna repeat it. So you can see what the password is here. You've also got this great generate tool so you can actually generate a complicated password as well. If you want to use a complicated password, you can specify the length, etc. So this way you don't have to remember all of your passwords, which is a great thing. Uh, you know, so many people have got so many passwords and you can lose track of what is what. So generate a password, you can save it into here. You can put the URL, www.worldbankoftheworld.com whatever, all right? You can put an expiration date, you can put some other notes, this is a good password, etc. You can then add other attributes if you want to, you can change the icon. So this is a, a website, for example, 
and OK. Now that has now saved it into the root. I've now got my bank of the world in here. I can then create another one. Uh, my Gmail password, my Gmail. We'll just leave it as that. Uh, hello there is my username at gmail.com. My password, again, whatever I want it to be. URL is www.gmail.com and OK. And that has now entered a second one here. So again, I can double click on it. I can change my icon. This is now, what's this? This looks like a mail. I don't know, it could be mail related. I'm not sure. Let's use this one. That's a nice mail one. And that is now saved it. I can create new groups, test, okay, within the root. So I can say I can call this, uh, for example, I can call this banking. I can create a new group. I can call this email services, etc. And then I can, you know, for example, I can put Bank of the World into banking. And I can put my Gmail into my email services. That way, I've got multiple areas where I can store all of my passwords nice and easily. Okay. The other great thing about this is, um, let's say, let's say you've got somebody who's looking at your screen while you're accessing this area. You can easily um, access a lot of these services uh, nice and easily just by going in, copy and copy straight from here. The Windows version has a really cool feature where it's got the password listed in here and you can just double click on it. You don't even have to see what the password is to be able to copy it as well. So that's, yeah, look, that, that's a cool tool to use. KeePass, um, fantastic. As I said, it's available across all your platforms. Something handy that I do as well is I like to keep my key pass in a single location. So if you have something like uh, Google Drive or, or um, you know one of those online uh, shared storage uh, things, so you could, for example, well let, let's save this, right? Let's just put this into my desktop, and we'll call it my key pass. So you see, it's now created this. KDBX, my keypass or KDBX file. I could then put this file onto say Google Drive and then access Google, Google Drive on my Windows, on my iPhone and have the keypass software on that. That way it's available on, across all my devices very, very easily. So check it out, keypass, great tool for saving all of your passes to one location. Highly, highly recommend it. And uh, I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to Digital Byte Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.